G'day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Where's My Yowie. Today, I'm reading an old newspaper report about a Yowie sighting at Cressy, Tasmania, in 1873. So we'll get into it. This was published in the Launceston Examiner on Saturday, the 22nd of February, 1873, titled, What Is It? to the editor of the examiner. Sir, the plentiful harvest has been safely gathered in, a matter of unusual importance to the farmers who, in addition to ordinary dangers that threaten their crops, has this season suffered from the ravages of another destructive pest. I am anxious to know whether others have been similarly troubled. Therefore, I send you such information as I have been able to gather concerning the destroyer, which, like so many others, belongs to the animal kingdom, although we cannot quite make out which branch it is to be classed under. Some thinking it a beast closely connected with the baboon tribe, others call it decidedly foul, and others say it is more like a reptile. Some of the farmers, finding that their wheat in patches stripped of its heads, thought the caterpillar had made its appearance again, but one whose farm is situated on the banks of the river was told that some fearful looking creature had been seen in the early morning tearing the ears off his wheat. He laid himself in ambush and was rewarded with, with a glimpse of the creature, which was of great size, being apparently between five and six feet high as it stood up on its hind legs. It was a kind of red in colour and furnished with a pouch, in which, like a pelican, it stored its prey for home consumption using for that purpose its forepaws, which seemed furnished with long and sharp claws. The farmer, in his anxiety to get a fair view, unfortunately alarmed the thing, which immediately made off, uttering a cry, something like chook chooky. An old bushman tells me he has often seen the animal in the early days, and that it is even more troublesome in poultry yards than amongst crops, that it is very pugnacious, the female fighting with her claws, whilst the male uses his venomous quills like a porcupine. He says too that the young, when first produced, are black all over, but these may be only bush yarns like those about the Bunyip. Peeping Tom, Cressy, February 1873. Editor's note. Perhaps our readers can solve the above enigma. We cannot. Editor, Launceston Examiner. The end. Wow, that's a really interesting story. I like how they call it the Destroyer. And then they're saying it's from the animal kingdom, but they don't know which branch it should be classed under because some people think it's a member of the baboon tribe or connected to the baboon tribe and others say it's more like a reptile um, and then people had seen him send the yaoi uh, tearing the ears off the farmer's wheat in the mornings and so the guy went and um, staked it out and saw it and he said it was of a great size five to six feet in height um, it was a red, red in colour and it had a pouch and its four paws were furnished with long sharp claws and then when it ran off it made something it sounds something like chook chookie which is classic and then the other guy said in the years ago that it was even more troublesome in the poultry yards than amongst the crops so it obviously liked eating uh, chooks and then we we'll just get back onto the pouch thing again um this is the third story i've done where people have said they've seen a yaoi with a pouch and the most prominent one was a story I did called 
marsupial man Yowie sightings at the Hawkesbury River in 1912 and that was written by a Mr Horace Saxon of Saxville Hawkesbury River and him and five other people had seen the Yowie there and they all said it had a pouch with young ones in it so is it possible that Yowies are, or some Yowies are part marsupial? Um, who knows, but it's very interesting theory. Okay, that's it from me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye.